Hey Trail Runners, welcome to Chasing Gold, where we'll be chatting with some of the top runners coming to the Black Canyon 100K this year. If you have not heard, the big news is due to the unfortunate cancellation of the Tarawera Ultramarathons, there is now three tickets up for grabs across both the men's and female's field. So let's chat with those athletes chasing gold. Today, we have Addy Bracey. Addie runs for Nike Trail Running. She is also a three by national champion, three by Olympic trials qualifier, twice in the marathon, once in the 10K. She's got a second at Leadville, a top 10 at Western States, and most recently has won the Run Rabbit Run 100 in Steamboat Springs. Addie, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for coming on with us. So I got to ask, Run Rabbit Run, that is a big prize purse. Am I correct? It is, yeah. Please tell us you splurged and got yourself something nice with that money. I did, actually. Yeah, I told myself if I won that race, I had been wanting like a, a truck camper um, for my truck to spend more time on the trail. So yeah, bought one pretty much right after it and love it. It's been awesome. So definitely splurged. Nice, nice. And how are you feeling coming into Black Canyon this year? Pretty good. Yeah, it's always an interesting one because it's an early season race. Um, you know, don't want to be too fit for it. And we're getting a lot of snow here in Colorado lately. So I had to kind of improvise with training. But um, yeah, for being an early season race, I, I feel about where I would want to be, you know, without maybe throwing all my eggs in, into this basket. Nice. And where, where are I in Colorado? Uh, Denver. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so when you're looking at your training coming in for any sort of event, how, how are you tracking that? Are you tracking miles, duration, vert? I do a combination. Um, I definitely have a mileage range I shoot for, but um, I'm actually someone that used to do a lot of high mileage when I was running marathons and stuff and still do a decent amount, but have scaled back and focused a lot on vert the last few, um, maybe the last six, eight months, uh, especially over the summer. So that's been a, a top priority and um, kind of leads – pushes me more towards tracking hours and making sure I'm not going crazy. But um, yeah, I think Bert's a, a big game changer for me in the last little bit. Not something I was focusing on much before. Nice. And last year you were here at Black Canyon, correct? I was. How did the race go for you? Um, it wasn't a great race for me. I didn't execute very well logistically. Um, I was pretty fit coming in and was feeling pretty good, but um, made some mistakes nutrition wise and um, dropped some of my stuff, then didn't notice oh, it since no. we weren't allowed to have a crew last year, dropped on my salt, my salt tablets. And uh, it was hot for me coming from here where it's been cold. Most people, I guess, live somewhere where it's colder. So had a little, some snafus that, that didn't um, work out, unfortunately, but um, still loved it. It was cool to see the course and definitely excited to come back with the, the beta that I got last year. You know, I'd never been there before. So sure. So what, what, what has changed or what are you telling yourself? Do you have a, a mental strategy going in that perhaps is different from last year? Um, are you doing any heat training in the sauna to prep for the heat? I'm not, no. Um, yeah, no heat training. So I know that'll be um, something I'm at least thinking about and trying to account for in, in my nutrition strategy. Um, yeah, I think just in general, I kind of shift my mindset around racing over the summer after um, – just some rough races where I think I was kind of racing with too much urgency and not taking care of problems. And Black Canyon was one of those where I knew I had dropped on my salt, um, probably could have asked at an aid station or d done something to figure it out, but just didn't and kept kind of blowing through aid stations to try and hang on to the spot I was in and, and made some mistakes that way where the, the small problem became a really big problem by the end. Sure. So um, definitely have shifted my mindset around that kind of thing and will take my time if, if things do pop up and address the issue in the moment instead of letting it just kind of escalate. 
And in terms of salt or electrolytes, what do you, what is your typical strategy? Are you carrying how many bottles are you carrying? Are, are you using sports drink? It sounds like maybe also some salt. Um, I usually mostly use like salt stick tablets. I I like to mostly drink water. Um, I will mix in some tailwind and, and sports drinks and that kind of thing. But I've I've recognized I'm someone that needs kind of a, a good amount of sodium and electrolytes, especially if it's hot and I'm sweating. So. Yeah, I had a bunch of them. I ended up to pocket to get a gel, and they all fell out, and I didn't oh, notice. Oh no! I didn't have them. Yeah, so this time we'll make sure my gear my gear is right and put things that are um, crucial, maybe in pockets, where they won't fall out. Absolutely. And what about? So, are you mainly using gels for the race? And is does this change from race to race? If it's a hot race, are you trying to use more liquids, or what is the general fueling strategy? mostly use gels i'll mix in a little bit of of solid food probably some potatoes or something maybe um i mostly rely on gels yeah and i guess my my holy grail is i always know i can fall back on coca-cola so absolutely i don't take it until i need it and then i know if nothing else is going down i'll just fill my bottles with that and get the finish line with a rush it's so funny with the coca-cola and the ultra runners right i mean we we need to get uh we need to get some coca-cola sponsors out here for for these runners so many using coke it's so funny and you have a uh specialize in mental strategies and performance in your own business and in life so how does that look in terms of say training are you using like a periodized mental strategies where at certain parts of the season you're focused on something and then as you get closer to race day do you have similar to physical training. I, are you kind of spearheading that mental approach? A little bit. Yeah. I, I work, um, my day job, I guess is in sports psychology. So it's interesting because it's like, I, I work with people so much on this. I think sometimes by the time it's come around, comes around to my training and a little bit burned out and maybe don't put as much time into it as I should, but I don't do much periodized, um, training around the mental skills so much as I definitely, um, go into a race with like a mental plan in terms of like the different things that could go wrong and how I would want to approach it um, and kind of have some different like scenarios and circumstances in my mind and how I'd want to respond to it, uh, both physically, but, but and mentally and psychologically. Um, and I mean, and then, yeah, maybe to a degree in terms of the why and like what I'm, con how I'm connecting to the results of the race, you know, and I recognize that a lot of that's a limited resource and it's still early in the season. So wanting to be serious about this race while also not, tying too much of how I feel about how the season's going to go, where my fitness is, you know, into the result of this, this first race of the year. Sure. And do you have any other races planned for 2022? Or are you just, are you going to wait and see what happens and hopefully get a, a spot in June? Yeah, I'm going to wait and see what happens. I've got some, um, I wouldn't call them plan B's even if it doesn't work out. I've got some other things that feel really exciting. And um, yeah, I think it's kind of a win-win. I, I hope I'm back. Um, at States in June, I have some unfinished business with having a pretty rough day there last year. But if, if not, you know, I've got some other things on, the, on my radar that also seem really fun and, and challenging. Awesome. And so when you, when you get into race day, how are you breaking down the race to, to get through it? Are there any sections of the course from, you know, you running last year that, that you need a specific, you know, mental approach where, you know, obviously the start of the race is, is a pretty fast downhill uh, you have the canyons and the heat's going to be building uh, and some climbing and rocks towards the end. Is there any part of that that gets you nervous or is there any part that you think you can play to your advantages? If anything, I, I consider myself a climber. That's where I, that's where I thrive and there's not a lot of that there. So I think no. maybe I yeah, just taking advantage of any hills that there are. Um, that's what I, that's what I like. It's what I love. So um, interesting that I keep doing these net downhill races, um, but I have some speed too. You know, I have some some foot speed in my background. So yeah, I think kind of cruising the downhills and um, trying to take advantage of the climbing when it comes. And the last ten miles sticks out to me last year because I was in a rough spot then, so um, I was walking most of it. So I'm honestly kind of excited to go. And it's it didn't require walking, um, especially sure. the last five or six. So kind of excited to go back and feel like I'm finishing that race hard and not just kind of in survival mode at that point. Yeah, I would say as a uh, 10K Olympic trials qualifier, I think, yeah, you have some speed in those legs. <laughs> Question for you. Do you have a mantra when things get tough out there? Um, gosh, that's a good question. I, I think I just try to remember this as part of it. So, yeah, if anything, one of my mantras is like, this is what you came here for. Um, w one of the recent ones that I've really liked that I kind of stole from, from someone else, uh, not a runner, but um, is is like, who are you now? Kind of like, who are you going to be when things are not going well? You know, it's easy to be like 
stoked and motivated and thriving when the race is going well, but it, it really determines how the result's going to be, you know, what kind of attitude, what kind of um, just general perspective of the race you take on when, not if, like when things get go south, because they will at some point for everybody, at least for a portion of time. So I look forward to those moments. I've not handled them well in the past, and I think um, I'm learning. So I try to remember both of those things when I get there that it's part of ultra running. So just address it and keep moving and don't, you know, sit and have a pity party or freak out, which is what I used to do. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a saying I like to say, everyone can run, run well when they're feeling good, but the top mm-hmm. athletes in the sport are going to run well when things aren't going well. And that's what's right. going to separate it. All right, Addy, we are going to get into the 10 question fart lick around. So you may want to be rehearsing that mantra because it's about to get real. Okay. Number one, what sneakers will you be wearing on race day? Uh, I'm going to go with the Nike Wild Horse. Nice. Good choice. If you happen to win a golden ticket, would you rather be handing it to Gene Wilder or Johnny Depp? (laughs) God, I have no idea. Johnny Depp. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How about a grocery store guilty pleasure? What are you buying in the grocery store that we shouldn't know about? Uh, I don't feel guilty about it, but I put down a lot of toaster strudels. (laughs) Nice. Nice. All right. Picture this. It's race day. You are walking on to the Mayer High School track. You can choose whatever song you wish to be blaring through the speakers. What song are you walking onto the track to? Um, oh my God, walkout songs. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Um, I don't know why Coolio's Gangster's Paradise is coming <laughs> Nice. It's like the first song that ever got me psyched up when I was like eight or nine years old. So I don't know why that's coming into my head. Awesome. We got to get that on the playlist. All right. How about how about coffee? How do you take your coffee? Uh, just black. Perfect. Yeah. Race superstitions. Anything from a shirt, socks, anything you're doing on race day that's got to stay the same? Actually, no. No, I really don't have any. All right. All right. You know it's sunny down here in the desert. Shades or no shades on race day? I don't usually wear shades. Always a hat, but I don't really wear sunglasses. Sure. How about race day breakfast? Is, is it always the same? If it is, what is it? Um, it's usually Red Bull, like a big Red Bull tall boy. <laughs> nice. A bar of some kind. I'm always like, I'm going to be out there eating all day, so I don't usually try and cram too much in before. But yeah, a bar or some oatmeal or something. All right. The last question. It's a tough one. What place are we going to see you finishing in at the Black Canyon 100K? <laughs> um, definitely in the top three. Awesome. Well, that's good enough for a ticket. <laughs> Addie, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. If you'd like, uh, you can give any sort of shout outs to your, your supporters. I know Nike Trail's there. If you have any family that's coming with you. Um, yeah, this floor is yours. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, stoked for Nike Trail. I just... Um re recommitted to them for the next few years. So stoked about that. And, um, Corey Connor, my, my friend and training buddy sometimes is coming to crew me and she's my, my master crew is crewed almost every race I've run. So I know we're dialed there. So I'm excited. Nice. Addie, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you at the start line. Yeah. Thanks. Looking thank you. To it.